Hey guys, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share with you some of my nonfiction favorites. I figured since it is nonfiction November, this is a perfect time to talk about some of my favorite nonfiction books. Um, I happen to really enjoy nonfiction. I haven't been reading a lot of it lately, but um, I do love it. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Before I get started, I do want to apologize for the extremely poor lighting that I have right now. Um, I kind of forgot that with Daylight Savings, we get dark a lot earlier, and yeah, I'm running out of daylight, so I have this lamp here trying to give me some light, so yeah, I'm sorry if the lighting sucks, and yeah, sorry. So anyways, um, the first book that I want to talk about is Into the Wild by John Krakauer. And um, I read this uh, quite a few years ago for my book club, and I'm really glad I read it because otherwise I wouldn't probably wouldn't have picked it up. But um, it's a it's about a young man named let me see if I can look it up real quick, Chris McCandless, who um, he was in like a well-to-do family, um, had a lot going for him, and he just up and like gave up all that and decided to um, hitchhike to Alaska. He let go of all of his possessions, he like burned his ID, all that stuff, like completely went off the grid. And um, a few months later, he was found um, froze to death out in the Alaskan wilderness. So it's basically um, John Krakauer trying to, you know, tell the story of this young man and why he did what he did and what happened to him and stuff. And it's just really fascinating and obviously sad. Um, but it's a really good book, so if you haven't read this one, you should check it out. The next book I want to talk about is one of my favorite memoirs, um, and that is Angel is Ashes by Frank McCourt. I don't have my copy because my mom is borrowing it at the moment, so I'll just put a picture of it here. But it's basically Frank McCourt's um, story about growing up in Ireland, and he grew up in extreme poverty, and his story is both... Um, obviously sad but also very humorous he has that way about his writing where it's it's both funny and sad and um, his story is just really great and actually the sequel Tiz is another good one um, but yeah Angel's Ashes is definitely one of my favorite books I can't do a nonfiction favorites list without doing a Hunter S Thompson book because he is one of my favorite writers so um, I'm gonna go with for this video Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas which is probably his most famous work um, I realize that it's not for everyone, um, it's very kind of um, out there I think for some people, but it's basically about him going to Las Vegas to cover a race and um, there are a lot of drugs involved and this book is just so, to me though, it's just so important um, as a journalist that um, he established this whole new way of journalism called Gonzo. I could do a whole video talking about Hunter S. Thompson and Gonzo, um, but I'll try to keep it brief here and just say um, what that's why this book is so important to me as a nonfiction book because of the way he wrote it um, from a journalistic perspective, but from his version of journalism. He obviously he went back um, years later and said that he felt like this book was a failed experiment in, at Gonzo, but um, I disagree. <laughs> um, and it's very subjective, which is in, you know, he injects himself into the story and his opinions and his thoughts and his experiences, which is completely the opposite of what you learn in journalism school. Um, but it's very um, entertaining, but also very insightful um, and intelligent and witty. Um, underneath all of that, like, humor and all of the antics and all of that, he actually has a lot to say about America and our culture. Um, and a lot of the stuff that he wrote about in his work in the 70s and 80s still sadly rings true today. So definitely pick this one up if you can. One of my next favorite non-fiction books is Fast Food Nation by Eric Schlosser. And I talked about this um, in a recent video. I did a tag video where I mentioned this book, but I read this book in college and it completely changed my mind about fast food. Um, which as a college student is kind of devastating because, you know, you kind of live off of fast food for a little bit there, at least I did. Um, you eat what you can when you can and it's cheap and all that stuff, so. But this book really made me think about not only the health repercussions of eating fast food, but the business side of it. Um, and the way that a lot of these fast food companies 
um, and not only fast food companies, but like just convenience food in general, even like frozen foods and stuff like that, the way that their employees are treated and whatnot and their business practices. So it made me kind of boycott that stuff for quite a while and it's just and it just made me more aware of the kinds of foods I was consuming. So this is a really um, educational book. I learned a lot about this book and I would highly recommend this to everybody. The next book I want to talk about is A Mother's Reckoning. Um, I don't remember the subtitle, but it's by Sue Klebold. Um, it came out last year, I want to say. Yeah, in 2016. I read it in 2016. And um, it is basically Sue Klebold's memoir about her experience with her son Dylan, who was one of the shooters in the Columbine school shootings back in 1999 um, in Littleton, Colorado. Um, one of the first highly publicized school shootings in America. And her story is just so, so sad and so heavy. Um, I remember reading that book. I had to put it down quite a bit because it was just so sad to me. Um, and it was just so brave of her, I think, to write that story um, because you don't often hear about the, you know, the suspects or the um, the people that do these crimes, uh, well, how it affects their family. Um, you often hear about the victims and the victims' families, as you should, of course, but um, I thought it was very brave of her to do, to, to write that book and also... Um, she didn't make any money off of it. All of the proceeds went to like mental health and suicide prevention um, type of organizations, which I thought was also great. Um, I would definitely recommend picking that one up. Um, it just she had a lot to say just about her experience and um, about her son because you know at the end of the day he did a terrible thing, um, a very terrible thing. But she also lost her child, so um, you can't help but feel for her, you know. So um, definitely recommend that one. I have two more books to talk about. Um, the first one is a pretty pretty well-known one. It's um, It was made into a movie a couple years ago, um, and that is Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. <laughs> and um, this is a book about, a biography about um, a young man who, what was his, I have to look up, Louis Zamperini, there we go, um, who, he was a Olympic athlete, he was a runner, and then he um, fought in World War II, and his plane was shot down um, over the Pacific, and he survived that, and then got captured by the Japanese and was in a POW camp. And as we now know, the Japanese did not treat the POWs very well at all. Um, it's a miracle, really, that he lived not only through the plane crash and all of that, but then to also live through that horrible experience at the POW camp. His story is just so just like inspiring um, and I didn't think I would enjoy this book as much as I did. This was another one that my book club chose and I probably wouldn't have picked up otherwise but um, this was a, this was just a fantastic story. Um, definitely was a five-star read for me and honestly I would probably want to read it again someday um, because it's just like I said it's almost like you can't believe that someone actually lived through this. Um, he just had a fascinating life and he lived well into his elderly years so he had a great life and um, yeah, this is a really, really good book. So, again, I feel like I'm saying this after every single book, but if you haven't read this book, you really should, because it is fantastic. And then the last book that I want to talk about is Detroit, an American Autopsy by Charlie LaDuff. And, um, Charlie LaDuff, um, up until recently, he was a reporter, um, in Detroit. Um, for those of you that don't know, I live in the Detroit area. Um, so he was a, um, reporter for one of the local TV news stations, and he wrote this book, um, just talking about Detroit and the problems that the city has had, and what makes this book so good is he, um, he approached it, I think, as a journalist, but, um, there's a lot of personal stories and stuff in here, too, um, because he grew up in the area, um, and some of the things that have negatively affected Detroit have also affected his family personally and affected him personally. I believe he had a sister who, um, got into drugs and stuff like that, um, and whatnot, and he talks about it a little bit in this book, and he just is kind of trying to examine what happened to this once great city, um, and talks about whether he thinks it will ever 
come back. I mean, they've been talking about a revitalization for quite some time, but um, he's just a really, I think he's a really good writer. I think he's a really interesting guy, too. I always loved watching him on, um, on, the, on TV news um, because his approach to stories and stuff was very unconventional, and he's just a really, like, interesting guy. So um, I would definitely recommend this book, um, especially if you're interested in, um, in Detroit. It's a, it's a really good one, and I really enjoyed it. Okay guys, um, those are some of my favorite nonfiction books. There are probably more, <laughs> honestly. I have a lot of nonfiction books that I have enjoyed over the years and whatnot, and I, I mostly like to read about people, just people, their real life experiences and things like that. I just find that kind of stuff just fascinating, because sometimes, you know, truth is stranger than fiction, as they say, so um, let me know down below if you have read any of these books, or if you know of any that are like it that you think I would enjoy, because I would love to hear. Um, but other than that, I hope that you guys are having a wonderful week, and I will talk to you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.